Hey everyone, if you have been reading my blog or watching my YouTube videos the last few weeks, you've noticed I've posted a lot of stuff on anxiety. Um, anxiety is an important issue to me. It's something that I've wrestled with a lot uh, for probably uh, most of my life. And it's something that I'm really passionate about and helping people work through. Um, it's a huge issue and you know, it kind of depends on who you read, but I see stats anywhere from 18 to 20 percent of our adult, adult population in the U.S is diagnosed with some type of anxiety disorder. Um, but think about that for a second. Those are people who actually go get help. They go to a doctor, they go to a psychiatrist, they go to a counselor, and they, give, they get some type of diagnosis that says, hey, you have this anxiety disorder. Think of all the people who never actually step foot in a counselor's office or a psychiatrist or a doctor and talk about anxiety. And so when you think about that, the numbers are much, much higher. Um, if 18 and 20% 20, 20 of our population is diagnosed, um, to kind of shrink that down for you, in a room, of, a room of 100 people, that means 20 people are diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. But think of all the people who struggle with anxiety on a daily basis or a little bit here and there and actually never get help. So the numbers become quite um, large and quite staggering um, very, very quickly. And what's important to me, one of the reasons I wrote my book is because I believe that anxiety can be a huge opportunity for us to grow in our lives. It is the catalyst sometimes that gets us unstuck and gets us moving. And, um, and, and, and I think if we can begin to look at it and see it as an opportunity that way, you can take some of the stigma out of it and some of the fear out of it. But it's a difficult journey to go through to work through anxiety. And so what are some practical tools that you can use to kind of work through the anxiety you have or to, to kind of um, um, manage or reduce it? And there's one tool that I think tends to be really, really underrated. And I want to talk about it today because I think it's very, very helpful. And you'll see it in almost every book on anxiety, and it's something I practice in my own life, and I recommend to people. And that is just the issue of breathing, right? Just focusing on your breath. And why is that so, so important? One of the reasons is that the uh, the word for anxiety in in the Latin actually means to like choke off, to literally cut off the airwaves. And so that's why when you see someone who has a panic attack or You've had one yourself it feels like you can't breathe right it feels like you have a heart attack in fact it wasn't long ago there was a person in my office and they were having a panic attack in my office and i could see it coming on because their their breathing got really shallow really shallow it was no longer this deep breath and uh, all of a sudden it's like they couldn't breathe and the first thing i had to do was help them just to calm down and to open up their airwaves and begin to breathe and just kind of walk them through some deep breaths until they felt calm again. And so breathing is important because literally anxiety in the Latin, like I said, means to cut off or choke off. And so literally it feels like we can't breathe. And from a, you know, a metaphor type level, when we have anxiety, it feels like our life is literally, is like literally being choked off or we feel like we're closed and like the walls are closing in. And so breathing helps us kind of regain control open up the breathing and to kind of make space for ourselves. And so there's a lot of techniques with breathing. I'm not going to get into all of them. I'm going to talk about just a simple one. And, and here's what I recommend. And I'm going to post a couple of blog posts about this breathing technique and some ways to practice breathing. But one is to simply carve out three to five minutes a day to begin to practice breathing. And what that looks like simply is often I'll take my iPhone, I'll put it on my chair next to me, I'll set the timer for three minutes. And I, this is how I start off. I started doing it for three minutes because you don't want to feel like it's too much, like it's too overwhelming. And you can lay on the floor, or what I like to do is kind of sit with my arms on the chair and my feet grounded on the floor because it's important to feel like you're centered, right? Got your feet flattened. Because when you have anxiety, it kind of feels like you're uncentered, kind of like you're out of control. And so you sit there, you sit up straight. Um, you can close your eyes if you want. You don't have to close your eyes. And you simply do deep breaths just really slowly. And the way that I describe it is, if you remember sometimes when you go to the doctor's office and they, they put the um, stethoscope on your back, right? Um, it, it, it's like that. And they say, hey, take a deep breath. And you do the big... Right? That's all you do. It kind of feels weird. It feels weird to do it in front of somebody. But you're just simply taking, you're breathing in and you're breathing out. You do that slowly for three minutes. And when three minutes is over, you're done. That's all you got to do. And there's no magic in it. Um, lightning is probably not going to fall from the sky and you feel better. But it's really simply a practice and a habit that you build. And uh, the, the reason you do it is because eventually, the more you build that habit and practice, one, not only does it help you kind of go into the day feeling more centered and grounded, but two, when anxiety starts to hit, you know what to do. It's like you've been practicing 
the fire drill, and all of a sudden anxiety comes, what do I do? Find a place, take a deep breath. And so you can focus on that. And really, the, the, the main focus and one of the main things you do is just you focus on literally the air coming in and out of your nostrils. Sometimes people go and they breathe out of their mouth. You can do it different ways. I like to breathe in my nose and kind of breathe out of my mouth. You can do it whatever way you want. But the goal is that whenever you start to feel distracted, you think about that issue at work or in your marriage or with your kids, you just focus back on literally the breathing, just the element of breathing. That's one way to do that. Like I said, it's just a habit, it's just a practice. Another way that I like to kind of add something to it, and for me that's important um, in my faith as, you know, um, um, as a Christian, and that is I, I like to incorporate uh, like a word or a prayer or, or scripture, for example, just to kind of meditate my mind upon. It gives me something to focus on. And so for me, a word... Um, and actually a verse that's been really important in my life over the last year, probably two years, is Psalms 46.10, which says, Be still and know that I am God. Something I focus on. That kind of grounds my breathing exercise. And so for me, when I do the breath in, the, I'll focus on the be still part. Be still. And I just kind of say that in my head. And then when I breathe out, I'll literally breathe out and focus on the idea, know that I am God. So be still and then know that I am God. That, that is how, that's what focuses me. I focus on my breath literally, but I focus on that verse. And so you can do that as well. You can focus on a word or a verse or a prayer. There's a lot of different ways to do it. You don't want to overcomplicate it. You want to keep it pretty simple. But where I start in all exercises and practices when it comes to anxiety, I, I start with this breathing technique and I find it to be very, very helpful. And lots of people do this. Um, uh, lots of famous musicians, athletes, um, entertainers, actors, um, uh, corporate CEOs, uh, practice breathing before they step on the stage, before they step on the playing field, before they get up to hit a, a, you know, a, a long drive um, on the golf course, or before they get on the free throw line, right? They practice breathing, and sometimes we're unaware of it. And so for you to practice this, I think, is really important. And the more that I practice in my own life, the more I'm able to kind of help myself in each and every moment. Um, sometimes in public, I'll be doing this exercise and no one's aware of it. Or when I'm in a conflict with someone, I can kind of ground myself and do some breathing and no one's aware of it, right? I'm not doing the big exaggerated, but I'm kind of doing a modified version. And sometimes I just kind of have to leave the room and take some deep breaths and concentrate. So I'd love for you guys to focus on that. And let's kind of start there. And over the next, um, you know, few weeks, few days, I'll be posting more stuff about anxiety and some tools that you can use. So anyways, have a great day.